Good morning, everybody. Danny and Wanda back from Deep South Homestead. Today, we take you on a journey and show you the secrets at Deep South Homestead. We're going to talk today a little bit about electroculture, and I'm going to show you some of the processes that we're going to do. Now, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to go into the high tunnel. If y'all watch us, you'll know all through the winter, we had some tomato plants that bore tomatoes through the deep, hard freezes and everything like that. They still bore tomatoes. We ate tomatoes all during the winter months. The plants uh, had gotten where they were getting old, so I went in and cut a bunch of suckers off of them and stuck them over to the side to root them. Well, now they've rooted, and we're going to take them from the high tunnel over to Pecan Grove, and we're going to put them in the ground, and we're going to show you some of our techniques. All right. Okay, here they are right here. We'll see if I, I'm trying not to. And this was a mystery tomato that just came up yeah, from this seed. Is our, this is our mystery tomato. We don't even know. Uh, we even know what it is. <laughs> kind of interesting. We kind of think it's a celebrity, but well, it, it came. Well, it's, we only had celebrities, so we know it came from a hybrid celebrity. We know that. Yeah. Uh, so there's no doubt. You know, there's no doubt about them. Take some of this soil here with me. So, uh, now this one is doing really well. Boy, this one's took off. And these were just suckers that you planted. Yeah, these are all just strictly suckers. Let me see if I can get this knot. Oh, man, I'm deep. It goes deeper than I thought. This done rooted really well, and you're oh, losing roots. I'm losing roots. I mean, look how tall. And it's trying to bloom. Yeah, I know it. It's, I didn't want to mess it up, but, um, now those are what, those are up. what, those are what cut stuff off deep. That one was even, so I'm going to, um, I didn't bring enough containers. I only thought I had three. Uh, take that one and put it on top of it and you kind of maybe take it out. Maybe so. Um, I know this one's blooming. Um, see if I can. I got onions here I can't go to. Yeah, see the roots? Nice roots. Nice roots pushing on that one. That's, boy, that's some fine dirt there now. <laughs> Soil, whatever you want to call it. Dirt. Dirt in the deep south. Look at the difference in the high tunnel soil color. Totally different. <laughs> this is some good dirt here, but that dirt in that high tunnel is that's, awesome. That's our homemade dirt in the high tunnel. We took some of our dirt and some potting soil and mixed it together and made yep. that dark, deep, beautiful look. Yep. We'll get rid of this right here at the ground that little bloom we don't need that bloom down next to the ground mm. 
All right, guys, y'all hear all those birds in the background? There's a little known secret that this has actually been documented that uh, birds, when they chirp, give off a frequency that coincides with nature and plants and stuff like this. And they make the plants grow. It's a proven fact. You can play sounds of birds chirping and stuff like that next to your plants. And your plants will actually grow a lot better than they do if they don't have it because of frequencies. We're learning lots about frequencies now. Thus, the new technology we have out, we're not gonna go into, but um, we're gonna get rid of this. And notice you did turn it and because I, it's so tall, you turned it in the soil and- I laid it down. And giving it more room to give it put more on room roots. to root. Okay. Some of them are not big enough yet. Okay, we're gonna put the fiberglass rods. There's a reason for this. We're gonna discuss this in a minute. These are electric fence rods, non-conductive. And wooden will work. Wood will work, yeah. PVC, it'll work. As long as it's non-conductive. What we're doing now is called electroculture. Now there's some things about electroculture that it's not new technology. It's been around for a long, long time. It was really uh, experimented heavily with uh, during the world wars by Britain and other countries. Uh, some things is not ever told to us is that when we use iron in the soil, it demagnetizes the soil. Plants work off of frequencies, just like everything else. You'll, there's lots of information out there. It's just not being able to get a hold to it is a problem. But everything, even your body works off of frequencies. Your eyes work off of frequencies. Your heart works off of frequencies. Everything about us works off of a frequency. A plant is no different. And plants, y'all. if y'all followed us for very long, I've talked to you about the gamma rays coming up out of the earth now because the magnetic fields on the earth are weakening. The gamma rays are coming up, destroying the root systems on the plant. Frequencies now, certain frequencies, let me just say, are damaging our plants. So thus what we're going to be doing is reversing that process. There's frequencies floating through the air everywhere. And they're very disruptive to to our cells as well as the plant cell structure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use copper today and not iron. Because see, what they don't tell you is, is iron demagnetizes the soil as we pull through it. Even with my plows on my tractors and hoes and rakes and shovels, they demagnetize the soil. There's been tests done that shows where if you use copper, uh, tools in the soil that plant growth boosts and production boosts. There's even been TV commercials in foreign countries back in the day that told people if you use copper tools in the soil your plants will overproduce and because of uh, kickbacks and uh, big brother let's just say that they use chemicals now and uh, fertilizers and all this kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do today, okay, these in the cages right here beside us, Miss Wanda has pepper plants and she has tomato plants and stuff, has the wire steel concrete reinforcement wire cages around them. Now these cages are probably 20 years old and they're still going strong. Now that is still a form of electroculture doing that, but it's not the best form. The best form, this is old copper wire here. Now this wire was on the property here. It was running, it was what was in the old barn up there and I pulled it out. 
I stripped some of the insulation off, which is a chore because it's done got hard, but I'm, I'm doing it uh, just to prove that you can just use anything. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick this, get this dirt clawed out of the way. We're going to stick this deep, is pretty deep into the soil right here. I got it down there about eight, ten inches there. And I'm going to wrap this around. And what I'm doing virtually here is creating an antenna. We're going to bring this on up now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let this just kind of stick on up in the air up here. I'm going to wrap it kind of tight right here. And we're going to let it stick up like that. This is going to form an antenna in the soil. Now, those of you who watch us you know, regularly will remember Mr. Mickey from Hills Mill Homestead. Me and Mr. Mickey sat and talked about electroculture. Um, electroculture is not new to me. It's not new to Mr. Mickey. Uh, I've been knowing about electroculture since probably the late 80s, early 90s. I used to watch a guy, I hope I get his name right, Mr. Jerry Baker. I used to watch him a lot on educational TV uh, talking about electroculture. And I did electroculture back then. I've done electroculture my whole life, basically. Uh, it's just something behind the scenes I do a lot of times. I don't really talk a lot about it because... To a lot of people, it's like voodoo, you know? Uh, it's like old wives' tales and stuff like that when it's really not. It is actually uh, technology. And technology, I'm probably going to talk a little bit about technology on porch time this coming week. But technology is not a bad thing. It can be a bad thing if it's not done right. But technology is a good thing. And today, what I'm wanting to do is to take these plants. Now, this is the mystery tomato. We don't know what it is. Uh, we just know it come out of my worm castings, and the only thing that we had was the celebrity hybrids, and we know it's a variety from that. We don't know what it is, but it did produce during the hard freezes and didn't die. These are cuttings off of the uh, mystery tomatoes from my high tunnel that we've got here. I rooted them in my high tunnel like we talked about earlier. And what we're going to do is we've brought them over here to Pecan Grove, and we have put them out here now, and we're going to continue on with this electroculture, and we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, those have got a head start. I did this on purpose. Those have a head start, and you see they're doing really good, to be honest with you. Um, you can see there's, a, I don't know if I can get it where you can get to it or not, but there's a tomato right there. They're actually producing tomatoes already. They're blooming. Now, this is a determinate variety. It's not an indeterminate. And these are celebrities. Yeah, and this is the just celebrity. That's all I can tell you. Uh, these are also blooming, her other one here. And notice the dark vigor and the green color of it. You know, I mean, it's already uh, looking good. There's nothing wrong with it thus far. And I got a little tomato on that side. Uh-huh. I see it right there on her. This, this just old wire off the property here, like I told you, it was used to, you know, <laughs> wrap muscadines, tie stuff up with. It was just used for whatever. You know, that's the trendles that's still on it there to get off of it. But anyway, what I do is I just, and this has been laying out in the sun. It's extremely hard. If you got new wire, it's really easy to do. But you can just lay it on there, run it across your hand like this, and you can strip the, the plastic off of it then when you get to that point beauty of a pocket knife oh yeah and get a hold to it it's so hard to you just peel it off and then you can cut that part off of there throw it in the garbage then you got copper we've got the bear and this is the old this copper here oh this wire is probably from back in the 60s or 70s somewhere in there it was in that old barn up there um we're just gonna like once again we're just gonna run it down there about eight or ten inches deep in the soil and we're just gonna make our little antenna i'm gonna wrap it around it make sure i don't catch my tomato plant we're gonna snip this off once again
I'll stick it through there and I'm gonna stick it up, make my little antenna. There we go. And here's another one done. If you want more information, I mean, my friend, Mr. Mickey up at Hills Mill, he's, uh, he, should been, he showed his garden last year and he's showing it again this year using electroculture. You can go check him out at Hills Mill uh, Homestead. We're going to continue on to do these other two right here. And then, guys, we're going to stay with us. Subscribe to us. Hit that uh, notification button. As we put videos up showing you the comparison of these plants and how they do. Now, these are the underdog. Remember, these are the underdog. These are the indeterminate. We know that uh, by because in my high tunnel, they just kept growing taller and taller and kept producing more tomatoes. Ms. Wanda's is a determinant, so we're going to see if the underdogs can catch up with them and flourish and do just as good as those that's been taken care of and got the steel cages around them. We're just a comparison. We're going to see does, does the steel versus the copper make any difference. Now, we're also going to check if these are more disease resistant than all of these are. If the disease starts hitting one or the other, we're gonna just, hey, it's a comparison video. We're gonna compare them in the future. That's why I tell you, stay with us, continue to watch us, because in the future, we're gonna keep comparing stuff just to see how it does. Thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. Alright guys, for those of you who thought I wasn't going to do it, <laughs> I know you're asking, asking that question. I wasn't going to get here and work in wet, messy dirt. It's supposed to flood later on today, so I think we'll be fine. <laughs> 